Welcome to Twisted Dice. Welcome, I'm Darren from Twisted Dice, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play, paint the Plague Reaper for the Lord of Contagion. Now, I'm not going to show you how to paint the whole model, it is just literally just the Plague Reaper itself, and how to make it look absolutely friggin' awesome on the battlefield. Because this is going to be one of my Warlords, if I choose to use him, I want this model to stand out, and I want to make him pop. He's got to look gorgeous. Um, I want him to be, as he's looking upon his enemies with the big old axe upon his hands, I want to put him the fear of God that they're about to know that they're going to be swiped down by a rusty, dirty blade. This video, I'm going to show you how to do that technique. Now, if you like any of the content we're pushing out of Twisted Dice, please do us a massive great favor. Hit that like and subscribe. It helps us out massively. Not only that, every Monday, I will be doing a painting video, painting guide from 6 p.m., um, I'll be showing you some cool tips and tricks. It's definitely well worth keeping an eye on what we're doing at Twisted Dice. Let's get down to the video. So for the first part, we went with Lead Belcher, which is a base color from Citadel. Now we wanna make this ax look old, dated, and rank and rusty. So first thing we need to do is take some non-oil. Now this is the non-glazed version. Now it's quite easy just to bathe this model straight into Nolnal, but we've got to be reserved and we've got to be careful on where we place it. Um, so we pretty much want to cover all of the acts in Nolnal, but we want to pull this up in just certain areas. So just as you can see where I'm going with the brush, I'm just pushing it and manipulating the Nolnal in the places I want it to go. Now we want to start thinking about adding some color and some depth into the actual axe itself. So next up, we're going to be using Agraf Earth. And again, using the non-glossy version, uh, just so when we start applying this paint onto the model, it starts, again, taking away the shine. But this is going to be the base foundations of your rusting colors. And it really does start adding, making that model start popping just on this, this layer on its own. I think it's really important to note that when I'm using Agraf Earth and I'm using non all I don't actually use it straight out of the pot. And the reason being is if you use it straight out of the pot, it's too thick. So if you're trying to do um, get into corners, nooks and crannies, what you tend to find is your paints will pull up too much and it will leave a horrible little stain afterwards. And I don't want that. So what I tend to do is I add a couple of drops of water into the mixture. This way it allows me then to manipulate the paint, put it to where I want it to be, and I can be more precise on exactly what areas I want darker to lighter. I know other painters will have different ways of thinking about this, but that's just generally the way I work. I like to have more control over the way I paint. So next up, we're going to be going in with Dried Bark from Games Workshop Citadel range. Now, if you haven't already come to the dark side, it's time to switch over your paints from the Citadel pots over to the dropper bottles. It really has changed the way I paint. No, it doesn't. It just means that the paints doesn't dry in the pot, you idiot. So as you can see, I'm using airbrush thinner to actually break this paint down. Now, airbrush thinner works perfectly to thin down your paints to go for an airbrush. So why can't it actually work well when applying your paints to the model. So as you can see, I just use a drop of airbrush thinner and it really does get the paint to where I want it to be. Now, because my paints are thinned down, it allows me to place the, the weathering effects exactly where I want it to go. And because it's thinned down, it's not so, the color of pigments are not so strong. So it means two things. One is a little bit more opaque, so now I can build up the colors to where I want it to be. But more importantly, because I like to cheat when painting, I've got a hairdryer just to hand, so because the paints are thin, the paint actually dries very, very much quicker, allowing me to get on with this process so much quicker. So next up, I'm gonna be using a rust color from Vallejo. So just like previously, I'm gonna add a little bit of airbrush thinner into the mixture. Again, this will make this paint opaque, it'll make it thin down, but the more important bit is about this, again, it means that I can manipulate the paint to where I want it to be on the actual model itself. And this is the crucial part about it. So with the lighter rust, I don't want the lighter rust to go all the way down the actual axe itself. I just want to start forming into the areas where I believe 
that the the newer fresher rust is going to start appearing on the actual axe itself so more into the recesses more up towards the the joints of the actual axe itself again because those paints are thinned down this is really allowing me to manipulate on where i want the rusty colors to start building up in certain areas on the actual axe itself So the next stage was to go in with Orange Rust from Vallejo. Now, just like the previous edition, going in with some airbrush thinner just to break this paint down. So if you don't own airbrush thinner, don't worry about it. You can do exactly the same effect with water. For me, it's just more of a personal preference. I like to use airbrush thinner when uh, mixing up my paints upon the actual palette itself. So like for instance, if I'm doing metallics, lead belcher, I would actually drop a little bit of airbrush thinner into the mixture just so it runs smoother on the actual model. But again, remember, this is just down to personal preference. So when applying this next stage of rust in, again, I don't want to go too far down the axe itself and more thinking about around the rivets, the joists, joints, um, I want to start thinking about where the newer, fresher rust will actually start appearing on the actual axe. So like, for instance, the bottom part of the axe, where I can just imagine that over time where he's been cleaving into his victims or smashing into uh, land raiders, tanks, repulsors even, um, where the axe has come away and you've got that fresh bit of metal, you can have that start pooling of rust starting to build around the bottom of the actual axe. So with this stage, I did give it a good couple of coats but again, in between coats, I went in with the actual hairdryer itself just to speed this process up. Again, because the paints are thinned down and I'm not applying loads and loads of paint onto the model, it means my paint time is so much more quicker. Um, just having the hairdryer next to me just means I can just speed this process up and that's really, really important. A, not to overload the actual brush itself and B, just have a hairdryer next to you just to speed this process up. If you don't have a hairdryer, you can still, you know, you can, it's still going to be able to be done. It just means it's going to take a little bit longer just while you wait for each layer to dry. So now this is where the rust really starts happening. This is the magical part. So going in with a clear orange fruit from Vallejo, it says clear orange on there, but when you see it on the actual palette itself, it doesn't actually come across as clear. So this orange is absolutely awesome. I love it. It is very vibrant. Uh, it really does start helping pick those other colors and it makes them pop. So at the moment it looks very vibrant and bright while the paint's dry. But as soon as that paint starts drying on the actual axe itself, you'll start seeing it would start doling off um, and actually start blending in nicely on the actual model. Now again, because the layers are quite thin upon the actual axe itself, it means that still using my hairdryer trick, it means that I can quickly pop this under the hairdryer, let those paints dry and then go back in. When doing any of these techniques, it's really important that once you apply the paint on, don't be tempted to go back in. So if you apply a layer on and you think, oh God, no, that's not quite dark enough or not quite bright enough or I haven't got it quite there, let the paint dry before you go back in and try and manipulate it. That's so, so important, which if you don't, you're going to start, that's when accidents happen and that's when you start having problems.
so next up i used a little bit of orange rust uh pow pigment powders from forge world now this was just to give this a little bit of um, extra character and give it that that texture of rust around the actual model and all i'm doing is just dabbing this on with a dry brush uh, just into the areas where i want the rust to be now you don't quite have to do this stage just yet. You could do it a little bit later on because we've still got loads to do. Um, but for me, it was just about adding that texture and that extra little bit of film. Just see where we're at, really. Okay, this is the way we're going to start changing the way we paint. So Sotec Green from Games Workshop Citadel range was now, now used. So we're just going to do a small drop onto the palette. We're going to use some glaze medium that is from Windsor & Newton. Uh, now with this, I apply a couple of drops of this to the palette. But then what I also do is apply a couple of drops of water to the mix itself. So one part paint, two parts medium, two parts water. So hopefully on the palette, you can see exactly how this is going to look and how it's gonna actually, um, how it's gonna be on the actual palette itself. Cause this is really, this is really important. So now this stage is more down to personal preference, whether you wanna do this upon your axe. If you're happy with the way the axe looks at the moment, that's fine, just leave it at that stage and then just skip this bit and then go to the next part afterwards. But if you want to add that axe and give it a little bit more character, a little bit more definition, and you want this axe to look absolutely friggin' awesome, gorgeous, and you want to make Papa Mergle proud, then this is the stage for you because this part really does make the axe pop and it makes it work. So this part is more down to personal preference on actually how much of this this color you want to be seen on the actual blade itself. Now, because I am using a glaze mix itself, when I'm applying the paint to the actual model itself, I'm not overloading the actual paintbrush. So what that means is, A, I can be more precise exactly where the paints are going to be itself, but B, it means that I can, I can dry this paint quite quickly under the hairdryer, and it means that I can build up multiple layers quite quickly giving me that desired effect that I'm after. Uh, and this is what it's all about because this is kind of like the, the foundation stage for what we're about to do next. The next color we're about to use is really gonna start making that, that bluey green really pop on the actual model. So this is where this next color is really gonna pop. So using Cerberate Green, hopefully I said that right, we're gonna now create another glaze mixture completely separate to the one we've already just done. So this next stage is looking upon putting this more into the center of, of your previous color you've already put down. And again, just like all the previous editions, now this is something I can't stress enough, I'm not overloading the actual paintbrush itself. So having minimal paint going onto the model means that I can, again, put it under the hairdryer. And I really do mean this, it really does speed up your painting process. And it's one I would highly recommend. So this next stage is all about cleanup. So using the Agraf Earth again, we're just gonna finish down with a little bit thinner and we're just gonna start applying this color back into the recesses, uh, back all around all the rivets and the joints. And this is just to help break that up and make those darker area, that, or the, the darker rust actually start standing out on the actual model. So now we want to start thinking about uh, the rust texture and how that actually looks upon the actual blade. So using light rust from Forge World Powder Range, 
Now, if you can't get your hands up with the Forge Well powders, AK and Vallejo do a really good range. Uh, so all you're really looking for is a real light, rusty color for this. So now for this next stage, all I'm doing is just dry brushing the powders on or just dabbing the powders onto the areas that I really want that, that rusty texture to be. So thinking about where the, the brightest part of the rust is, just dabbing it into those areas. So for the next stage, you want to use a real bright silver. So for instance, I'm using Chrome from Vallejo. Uh, now this is the, the airbrush range and it goes so nicely through an airbrush, but more importantly, for a paintbrush, it works really, really well. So when I'm doing this next stage, it's all about doing just like dapping the, the, the tip of the brush and just wiping it away from the actual end of the blade itself. Just creating like little small lines on the actual tip of the blade and this is kind of represent where the axe would have been hitting into something so if it is smashed into like another uh, a vehicle into fresh armor that that rust would have actually come away and you've now got fresh steel or fresh metal coming through uh, for where it's made those those blows dapping the paint on to the actual model itself will give it a little bit more extra character so if I was to run the paintbrush just along the actual edge itself, you would then get an edge highlight. By just dapping it on, it breaks the, the paint up, so giving fresher chips in the actual metal itself. So you can actually see where the the blade, or the in this case the axe, has been hitting up against things, or things have been laid up against it. It's then you created little chip marks or little pot marks into the actual blade. And it, it just gives that blade a little bit more extra character, more texture, and more depth. And, for me, it really does start helping this part of the, the model pop, and I love it. So for the next stage after this, you want to start thinking about pulling those colors together. So at the moment, you kind of see you kind of got a shiny and you've got a, a matte part of the actual blade. So using like a Lamia medium, uh, in my case, what I've done is used an airbrush and I've used a matte varnish just to pull all those colors back together. Now for this next stage, I wanted to create a little bit more depth in the actual model itself. So what I mean by that is I want to create that that rusty type where the, the, the rust is starting to flake off the actual model itself. So using a little bit of Trace, Troll Slayer Orange and a little bit of light rust from Forge World, I mix the two together with a little bit of water. And what I'm doing now is just applying this again, just in the brightest areas where that rust is going to be. So once that actually dries, that will actually start creating that more that rusty type texture on the blade and again because the because you're applying it over the matte varnish uh, this is going to come out quite matte anyway and it, this this part really does help make that blade pop and that's it nice dead easy and very very quick to do and as you can see it gives an, a really good finish to the axe itself now, hopefully you found this video helpful and useful. Uh, remember, when you're doing these weathering effects, it's up to yourself on how much you apply. But thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you all again next Monday for another painting guide.